course, our next speaker is Sandra. So now we have heard about root causes and uh, Sandra, she knows best of, what, of our, us all, all what it means uh, to uh, be trafficked and to suffer sexual exploitation. So please, Sandra, we are uh, very um, honored to hear your story and what you as a survivor has to tell you, to tell us. So you have, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me now? I, I don't know how to put the micro on. Okay, um, thank you for organizing this and for talking about um, prostitution and trafficking and um, solutions. Um, I want to speak about, um, first a little bit about me, about um, the lover boy method, um, which part legislation plays and also about the mechanisms of trafficking. Um, prostitution and about um, demand. Um, so first, um, a few facts about um, my story I have been through. Mm -hmm. um, I became acquainted with my trafficker and pimp um, who was about 35 years old on the internet when I was a minor. At the time, I had long continuing problems with my mentally ill mother, a stay in the clinic due to anorexia as well as self-harm behavior. And of course, he knew the circumstances and used my vulnerabilities. So when I came home, com came home from school, I stationed myself immediately at the computer and spent a, lot, a long time in different chat rooms. And we wrote more and more than every day. And he waited for me online and gave me the feeling to be there for me. Um, I spoke with him more and more about my problems and he showed um, support and understanding. And so it came to the first real meeting where he invited me to eat. He was my first love, the first person that I had sexual intercourse with. And um, up to this point, prostitution was not mentioned. Talking about prostitution began slowly, where he knew that I emotionally hang on him and he was the only person to whom I related. So at the weekend, I traveled by train to his city. And after a while, he took me to brothels of some of his friends who were brothel owners. And after a while, he wanted that I prostitute myself. And when I refused, he began to explain he had great debts and was stuck into difficulties and I'm the only person um, who can help him. So I had anxiety of losing him and that something is happening to him. And so I began to prostitute myself. I became a full life prostituted, full time prostituted woman and broke off school because I could not lead this double life. So this strategy, which is about targeted searching, recruiting and pushing young women into prostitution for the purpose to exploit them sexually by faking or simulating a love relationship at the beginning, falls under human trafficking and is called the lover boy method. This form of recruiting for human trafficking is getting more and more common because it is the safest way for the trafficker to escape prosecution. He can hide behind the alleged voluntariness of the young women that are under his control. So lover boy traffickers and lover boy pimps, they look for an um, easy prey. They use the vulnerabilities of the young women, um, especially when you come from a broken home, when you have already experienced sexual abuse, violence, neglect in the past. Um, these are the general preconditions for entry into prostitution. And but it's not limited that only um, vulnerable um, young girls are trafficked. Um, in Germany, there are also women who have been victims of lover boy pimps who come from families where there's no evidence of abuse or violence. Um, but they met their lover boy pimp when they were very young. It was their first time being in love. They were like typical adolescents rebelling against um, their parents. So. Um, we have a very um, um, this method is very common um, when it comes to trafficking and pimping. So, um, but how someone is able to um, 
endure prostitution, what means enduring very intimate things. Um, being in prostitution and enduring countless penetrations by strangers, um, one needs attitudes that trivialize this violence, um, that it all was bearable and or not so bad at all. And how do you get such an attitude? Um, if someone is abused physically or psychologically early in the childhood, as it was with me, the affected person is convinced by the idea that being mistreated is not so hard or deserved or normal um, because you don't know how it is to be treated well. In, psycho tra in psychological traumatology, this is called the offender-influenced way of thinking. It is kind of survival strategy to stand violence better. So if the current situation cannot be endured or changed, Affected persons often take the perpetrator's point of view because if they act like um, offenders want them to act, um, the chances of survival are higher. So, for example, if I do exactly what they tell me, they will probably let me alone and it will not become so bad. Or words like you are worthless can turn into I am worthless or you will never achieve it can turn into I will never achieve it. So this internalization and taking over of the offender's ideas due to self-protection becomes manifest until one is grown up and it um, determines daily life, not only in the form of a negative self-image, but also in the form of um, a lack of self-protection and self-care. So someone who had to learn enduring violence early as a survival strategy often um, won't later be able to protect against it. Um, and for these persons, there is a very high risk um, of being um, trafficked and exploited. So and when, in addition, sexualized violence in the form of prostitution is not named as such in society and in a state like in Germany, um, trivialized as a service, those offender-influenced ways of thinking will not be terminated, but confirmed. So with the legality of buying sex, um, people, or mostly women in prostitution, are taught that the violence that they experience in prostitution would not be real violence because it is legal that they can be sold for sexual objectification and abuse. So the government signalizes with its liberal legislation Prostitution is not violence, but a normal job. And this point of view is taken over by many, many counseling organizations, too. And that is dangerous because it misleads um, a person to get into prostitution without clarifying to them the immense amount of violence that awaits them there. So I give you an example of what I mean. When my trafficker pushed me for the first time into a brothel during my recruitment as a young adult, um, I had a very bad intuition and wanted to escape. I was young, unstable, um, vulnerable, and didn't know how to hold myself, how to hold myself, and in which kind of dangerous situation I was. He led me towards prostitution and coerced me and said I should not be embarrassed. It was all normal, he told me. Um, it's normal in Germany. It's just a job, and so on. And so I remember the point of view of our government, which considers prostitution as a job and that pimps as well as brothel owners appear on talk shows being called businessmen instead of criminals. So I remember that this milieu was mainly described as not so bad at all. And exactly this image of normality in the prostitution milieu is transmitted with Germany's state legislation. And so I could not recognize that I was on the way sliding into the middle of a criminal milieu full of violence. It was not named as a crime um, and won't be named as one. So, however, uh, our state has got a responsibility to be a role model. Every state has that responsibility to be a role model and provider of orientation, especially for young and vulnerable people. If our state had told me that 
for example, with a prohibition of buying sex or by talking about the violence um, in prostitution, that prostitution is violence and a violation of human dignity. My trafficker would have had it much harder to leave me in prostitution because um, I would be warned. So, however, the sad truth is that our state believes that sexual violence um, against women is normal because its liberal legislation on prostitution means nothing else. Um, that is what people are guiding themselves with. That's how children grow up in our country, in Germany, believing that it is in violence when women and young girls in prostitution are penetrated daily, sometimes 10, 20 times a day and are deprived of their dignity and worth. But of course, it is violence. So exiting and escaping after these after the experiences you made in prostitution is very hard. Um, a physical exit from prostitution, you know, the bodily step into real life um, can often be managed, but um, the physical exit does not automatically mean the psychological exit. So being in prostitution, um, you experience the deepest abysses of our society, an immeasurable and unimaginable extent of violence, humiliation, lies and inhumanity. Um, one can, free, can flee from this life physically, but psychologically hang in the thick of memories and pain. And often due to um, the experiences you have made, there is a deep belief that um, you are worthless, you are unable to achieve anything and deserve nothing else. So the physical exit is often difficult, but the psychological exit is even more difficult because um, it often takes years or even decades and it involves breaking through pain and trauma. It is the slow distancing from an earlier life full of violence. And this psychological exit is difficult but extremely important and it's not about you know forgetting your experiences but it is about accepting the non-erasable past to integrate it into your life and to simultaneously break free from this parallel world of prostitution and trafficking so um, to come to the end I want to mention the last point and it's about also what we have talked about. It's about demand. Um, to fight trafficking and exploitation, we need to reduce demand because demand is a breeding ground for trafficking. Where there is a high demand, it's much more lucrative for traffickers. You cannot fight trafficking when you are promoting demand on the other side. And when you treat prostitution as a job, as a service that can be bought like you can buy a pick a pack of cigarettes like it is in Germany, you are promoting demand. In Germany, we have an estimated number of 1.2 million sex buyers who use sexual services each day. So you can imagine that traffickers in Germany are becoming rich. So Germany is unfortunately a country where pimps and traffickers are able to become rich with a very high, with a very low risk of being prosecuted a very low risk because they can hide very well behind legal structures. So thousands of women in Germany are used and exploited, but nobody is really seeing this because it is hidden behind a legal system, behind a legislation that calls all the women in prostitution automatically, automatically prostitutes. But most of them, most of these, and we speak about 200,000 to 400,000 women in prostitution in Germany, they are no prostitutes. They are trafficked, they are forced, they were abused as a child and never got to know what it means to live a life without violence, to live a life with dignity, or they do not find the way out after their trafficking and exploitation situation, as it was also the case with me. So statistically, there is a high probability to become a whole life prostitute after being exploited and trafficked, not because you want it, but because you are broken. 
And most of these so-called prostitutes are the children who were left behind when they were young and now left behind a second time by society. So I don't like to call these broken souls prostitutes. They are no prostitutes from the heart. After my trafficking and exploitation situation, I become also such a free choice prostitute, but not because I was a prostitute from the heart. I became one because on the one hand, I don't know how to exit this life after my exploitation. So I was highly traumatized because of what has happened. And at the end, I lived in a brothel where I was exploited, had no flat, had broken up with school, had almost no contacts to people outside the red light. And on the other hand, I had experienced so much sexual abuse and exploitation that I lost my worth, my identity, my personality, that I thought I don't deserve help from people outside the red light and that I have to do the exit on my own, no matter how long it takes. And when you start with nothing, and when you have the feeling that the only thing you are worth is what your trafficker has made out of you, a prostitute, it takes time. It takes time to find back to yourself. And honestly, a lot of women being trafficked and exploited never find back to themselves because they had been broken too much. So statistically, there is a high probability to become a whole life prostitute after being trafficked so you have a free choice prostitute but nobody is seeing the stories behind these free choice prostitutes so it's not because you want it but because you are broken and the situation in this situation i even defended my prostitution outwardly because i don't want people to see how far i'm actually down how far i'm on the edge and because I, it would hurt too much to say that it is violence when you physically and or psychologically see no way to escape this violence so i was never a prostitute from the heart i grew up with the wish of becoming a sea biologist when i first saw the film free willy when I was a child and not of becoming someone being penetrated one day after the other. So in the meantime, my dreams changed because of my trafficking and prostitution experiences. So after my exploitation, I catched up school education, which I had broken up before because of my trafficker. I studied law and I'm going to become a lawyer fighting against exploitation and for enlightenment. This is what I am from the heart and other women dream for example, of being a police officer, a scientist, an artist, and so on. They dream about a lot, but not of being a prostitute. So no matter what kind of prostitution legislation we prefer, and I prefer the so-called Swedish Nordic model and fighting for this to implement in Germany with a lot of other great people, nobody can tell me that only one child on this earth grows up with the wish of becoming a prostitute, with the wish of being penetrated hundreds, thousands of times by strangers. Children do not grow up with this wish. So, of course, I cannot speak for every woman who is in prostitution, but for the majority. And we do not have 200,000 so-called prostitutes in Germany. Instead, what we do have in Germany, for sure, of thousands of broken children whose dreams were taken away from them and who are locked now in the system of prostitution. I was just one of these 200,000 to 400,000 who are just called prostitutes and where the stories behind are mostly unknown. So whoever is listening here, I please you do not normalize or accept such a system where you can find so many broken lives and souls. But instead, fighting the system and fighting the system means to fight against demand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. It's um, listening to this painful story is painful for us. It's a very strong testimony and you made very much clear uh, that, uh, that there are thousands of broken children out and uh, no uh, so-called prostitutes. We have already a comment on your what you said, a very powerful and moving testimonial of someone who went through the hell that is human trafficking. Thank you for sharing your story. I have another very interesting question. 
a question about the language you are using. And maybe that is one of the things the public needs to be more educated about. I was recently told by a person uh, running an advice center for women working in prostitution in my city uh, to please avoid the word, word prostitution as it is demeaning. Instead, she advised me to use the words like sexual or sex workers. Now, I hear a very difficult language here. In your view, what would be an appropriate language to use to talk about this? What would be a language that would help to raise awareness? Thank you for this question. Who would like to explain or to answer? Sandra, yeah. Is the micro on? Yes. Okay. So that is what one point um, where I was also talking not a lot, but a little bit in my um, in my talk that um, we in Germany have also um, a lot of counseling stations um, using the term sex workers and um, it's a job like any other. And um, the problem with this language is that so I, I'm, I'm just speaking now um, from Germany because I don't know um, about the country um, um, where this question came from. But in Germany, we have a very strong pro-prostitution um, lobby um, who yeah, spread the word that we have to use the word sex worker because um, prostitution is stigmatizing and um, for all. Um, the women I'm working with, um, it's completely different because if you use the word sex work, then you are telling this woman um, who was abused and who experienced a lot of violence and prostitution that this was just work, you know, and for them, it's not stigmatized um, to to be called prostituted women but for them it is stigmatizing to be called sex workers because this hides the violence and the abuse they have gone through in their lives and it's making violence invisible because when you um when you call something work you know um you you hide the violence um, behind this and um, the actual problem of prostitution. So um, all the women I know who have experienced a lot of violence in prostitution, they hate the word sex workers because they don't feel taken seriously and um, they don't felt understand. You know that that people. People who use the word sex work, they, for me and the women I am talking about, um, they do not really understand the system of prostitution because as we, as we talked um, all in our um, speeches um, the last one hour, when you call a system work where so many people are suffering, um, and experience so much um, violence, you cannot call this work. So it's stigmatizing to call them sex workers. So I really hate the word sex workers. And if one somebody calls me sex worker, then, you know, I really feel bad and I really feel stigmatized because this is not what I have experienced. I have experienced trafficking, forced prostitution and prostitution. but. Um, I experienced never, you know, kind of work. This was not work because, as Inge said, it's um, neither sex nor work, you know, what you experience there. Yeah. And the next is Sandra. I am the next? Yes. <laughs> um, so I think the question was um, how to tackle demand. Um, you know, I think in Germany it's the problem that we have this liberal prostitution law 
which is promoting demand because it says that prostitution is a job like any other. And of course, when you say it's a job, then you have um, a high demand. So um, our community, our society is also socialized um, in the point of view that demand is nothing bad. But um, demand is something normal. Like as I as I said before, you can buy a pick of cigarette, a pack of cigarettes, or you can buy a human being. You know, and um, so to tackle demand, it first needs the um, you know the consciousness of the people that this is wrong. You know what they do that um, that they are destroying lives. That most of the women are not there by free choice and when they are there by free choice they have experienced abuse before so that is not you know sex work but this is the prostitution system is a whole circle of violence um, and abuse and you have to enlighten um, society um, about that and also um, implementing the Nordic model which tackles demand so we're buying sexual services is a crime, you know, because um, in Germany, I see also no other way to reduce demand, to tackle demand, um, because, you know, if if you can buy, a, you know, if you can, if it's allowed, you know, to buy a pack of cigarettes, you will buy this pack of cigarettes, you know, and um, men will not stop buying the bodies of women um, as long as it is not forbidden, you know. And um, so the very first step is to, yeah, to, um, to not allow, you know, buying um, sex. And then also to educate, you know, in Sweden, they have programs also in France that if they, if police is catching, you know, a sex buyer, um, he has to go to a program where he is told what he does wrong, you know, um, if, you know, what is the consequence of, um, of what he did, you know, what's the story of a person who is in prostitution, she is maybe trafficked. So it needs also education then on the buyer's side. Yes. Thank you, Sandra.